Hey guys, um, today I want to talk about uh, something regarding Azure, which um, gets pretty interesting in the latest projects I, I am working on at my company. It is Azure App Configuration, which is a platform as a service uh, product from Microsoft, uh, which allows you to store your configuration for different platforms, for instance, .NET, which I will show you in the cloud. And um, I want to today I want to share some basic uh, stuff with you. First of all, we're going to install the app configuration resources uh, using infrastructure as code. So in my case, Bicep, but you know, this is just a general idea. You could take Terraform or whatever. And then we take a look at the resources, talk a little about a little bit about uh, how to configure them. I will show you all the stuff in conjunction with Key Vault 2. So how to store secrets um, or sensitive data more secretly. And then I will go over to .NET and showcase uh, some general stuff in order to access this. Um, so the purpose of this talk will strictly be beginner talk. So if you're already familiar with app configuration, I think not so many new stuff will go here. So yeah, um, maybe let me start by switching over to my presentation mode. I have prepared something, by the way, the source code will be available on GitHub and I will um, paste the link in the description below the video. So I'm using my app Azure app configuration folder here, which is basically empty. Um, there are two folders which are empty too. The source folder will contain the .NET um, um, sample application. In our case today, it will be a console application. And the infrastructure folder will contain the bicep stuff with which we want to start. So let me go to infrastructure and maybe <clears throat> I will put something in the timeline. So this is basically interesting for people who want to know maybe a little bit or get familiar with deploying stuff using um, infrastructure as code. So this is why I'm making this video a little bit longer. If you want to skip this part, you can totally go using the timeline below in YouTube and then skip this part. Okay, but now from the start, um, or let's start with building up the infrastructure. I'm using Visual Studio Code when I'm going to Bicep, which has a pretty nice extension on board. Uh, let me show this to you. Go to the extensions and then search for Bicep. I already have it installed from Microsoft and this helps you a lot on um, working with Bicep. So let me make a little bit of room here, clean up my console, and now it's an empty folder, as you can see. So basically, uh, where I'm starting is, I always call this the main bicep. So let me zoom a little bit, this bicep. Uh, and by the way, I'm not going into a lot of detail about bicep itself. So um, I have some videos about bicep, go and check, um, check them out to get a little bit familiar with the language. But here we are going to um, just having our entry point. As usual, you should have a um, param which is called location of type string. Um, you will see this later. This will be the Azure location where we put stuff into. So, and then we're starting with a resource with which is our um, resource group. And this is a resource group, um, latest version. And let me define the required properties, which is RG. And let's call this app config demo. So this is what we call it. The location will be whatever gets passed in. So that's it. And then let us create another file for the actual resources, which is the main resources.bicep which will have the target scope uh, resource group. And here we go and um, uh, insert the location again. Okay, let's do it this way. And now we can start to build um, our stuff. So um, let's first of all, create a resource for the app configuration. So the app configuration, let me see, is an app configuration store latest version required properties. So this is all you basically need. Let us start with this. My prefix is AF, A app 
CFG. So my prefix for coding freaks, this is appconfig dash demo. Uh, location is the past location and the SKU uh, is, um, I think it is, let me uh, watch my notes and you have to Google this if you don't know it, the SKU is family, you can have family of uh, A and name is I think no, this is Key Vault. What I'm looking for, the SKU is just free, I, I think. Yeah, I was wrong. So this is uh, basically a free app configuration. So basically, that's it for the first version. Let me go to my main bicep now, which was my resource group. What we can do now is we can call up a module because we are referencing a file, uh, which is my um, resources. Let's do it this way. And this is uh, pointing to this file. Require properties, please. Scope is the resource group. So this says create a resource group and deploy the stuff in this file into this group. Okay. This is just a, uh, a symbolic name um, for or a name for the deployment in the Azure portal later. Resources and location is the location. So this is just passing down the parameter um, which we got um, somehow here. So last step in terms of bicep is to create a parameter file because we have a parameter. Let's call it parameters.json. And I've just created a little sample uh, file. Let me put in all the braces here. So this is, I think, valid. So we are just, um, you have to just, um, you know, stick to the scheme schema and this is us telling him uh, for the main bicep that the value for location parameter will be West Europe. Okay, this is kind of the basic principle. Let's close everything up. All we need now is some sort of logic in order to deploy this easily. So what I'm doing most of the times, I'm creating a deploy PS1. Uh, so a PowerShell file. Let me go over and copy some stuff out. So first of all, I am I'm having this optional parameter or the switch, which is not a parameter. What if you will later see what it is? Um, then I'm bringing in some stuff, some variables, which is the ID of my tenant of my subscription, the name of the template file, the name of the parameter file, and the location where the deployment should happen, not where to deploy, because this is defined in the parameters JSON. Okay, uh, some magic. Let me copy this in and explain what I'm doing. So I'm checking the current uh, AZ context of PowerShell. If this context um, has not the same subscription ID as the one I've defined here, then I'm switching the content using my tenant and subscription, or else I'm just writing out reusing subscription. So this way the script gets a little bit faster. But if something went wrong here, uh, this is how I check if something went wrong in the last command. I'm just saying I could not set subscription scope. So this way I'm preventing myself from deploying pretty easily, pretty clumsy from deploying into the wrong subscription. Let me point out here on this, um, on this place, if you think that this is sophisticated or something, you're totally wrong. This is dumb and this is not good because what I'm doing basically is I'm using my logged in account, which is a named account doing this stuff. Just explaining it on a very high level. If you want to know a little bit deeper about this, hit me in the comments. But anyway, what you should do is you should somehow use uh, service principles and have a more clean approach in terms of security. This is not good, what I'm doing here. And by the way, Microsoft doesn't get tired of showing you this stuff uncommented, and I'm not a big fan of this. But this is just my opinion. They should do better, I guess. Anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm building just a date suffix, which is just a formatted date. And then I'm calling my deployment name, I'm having deployment name, deploy dash, and then this suffix. You will just see in a second why I'm doing this. Um, and then there is this 
AZ PowerShell command new AZ deployment. Be careful, be, you are only allowed to use new AZ deployment if the file which is um, used as a template is not in the resource group subscription, uh, in the resource group target scope. If you would have an existing resource group and deploy resources directly to it, then you would have to use the new AZ group deployment command, but this is all documented uh, somewhere else. And here you can see that I'm passing in the parameter file so that the parameters are stored in a file location. And um, I'm kind of passing down the what if switch. It is a switch in the origin command too. So that way I can do the following. I can do, um, or let me save it. I just can run deploy PS1 with the what if switch, which uh, let me tap out with the what, what if switch, which is what I am, where am I? What I'm passing in optionally. And now this way I am not really deploying, but I'm, and as you can see my demos before, they left me with this stuff. So I'm not switching a uh, subscription, which makes the script, this is this block, um, which makes the script pretty fast. And now um, he's collecting the status and he gives me, let me zoom a little bit here into, or make a little bit more room. Oh, I cannot scroll. Well, love it. Um, basically, this is bad. I don't know why. I have to redo the command because I cannot scroll. I don't know what's what's going on. The terminal kind of broken. Let me redo this and have a sip of coffee. Yes. <clears throat> Let's wait out. So keep in mind, he's not doing anything in Azure currently. Azure is just fine. Nothing's going on. And now what I can see with this agenda, he will create one, two resources, which is exactly what I expect him to do. Mm. The first will be a resource group, which is currently not there. This is my subscription, my MPN subscription. So this is sponsored by Microsoft. Um, it's empty. It has no resource groups currently. So he will generate a new resource group in West Europe. And what he then will do is he will generate a new app configuration. It's exactly what I expect him to do. And uh, with this information now, let's um, run it. And I will pause um, the video for a bit and I will come back when he's finished. So he's finished and I'm reworked my camera setup a little bit. So this is why I'm jumping around on your screen. But anyway, okay. Um, this is it, it succeeded. So let's go over to the Azure portal and refresh here. So we can see that now there's a resource group. Let's go into the resource group. And what you see now is that there's this uh, app configuration resource. We will have a look at this in a second. Important stuff is here. Let me point out where I am here. This is where it tells you, hey, you have a deployment. And I'm just wanna point out that, you know, those names, resources, for instance, is exactly what happened uh, uh, to be what I, uh, where am I here? What I used as my names in the main resource here, you can see resources, this is what I have deployed. So when I go to resources, you will see deployment details and here you see what was deployed. And during the deployment, the name of the deployment is uh, what I have with the dates. So this is why I put the dates in it. So anyways, this is my resource group. So I have deployed this app configuration and now finally we're here and can talk about what app configuration provides us basically. So on a very basic level. So first of all, um, it's a platform as a service. Mm. This means the app configuration itself is just a holder for other stuff like um, um, configuration values. So app configuration can do basically three things, um, depends on how you, you group them uh, for you. So first big area is configuration values, which is this talk is all about. So this means in configuration values, two things can be done by him. First of all, 
he is doing this whole name resolution stuff for you and I will show the case this later. And he has already built in the ability to have stage specific configurations. So if you are a .NET guy, you already are familiar, probably familiar with app configuration JSON files, which have this built in technology uh, if you want to have it, that you have app configuration.json as a basic file, and then app configuration dot, and then whatever environment variable is set, uh, dot JSON, in order to overwrite or add values depending on your environment. Good idea, works nice, problem with that, and this is the main reason why we talk about app configuration at all, is that those files belong to your repositories, which means that if you use this as it is, there are some, some um, extensions to this, but let's say you use it as it is, like it's, um, by the way, uh, also explained in the Microsoft documentation here and there, then you will get warnings, for instance, by tools running on your repository and checking for security issues. Because it's considered an issue to have stuff like configuration uh, values, sensitive configuration values in your configuration. What is sensitive? One thing which is in most applications, like a connection string, or not, not only database, also let's say storage account, whatever, all this is kind of weird uh, because you store it in your Git. So one could argue that storing it in your Git is just okay because, and I did this a while, uh, because I have private repositories, so what should happen? But you know, if, if you are, going to modern um, anti-attack techniques. For instance, you want to prohibit like supply chain uh, attack happening, then you should be careful uh, about this. So an app configuration can be can help you out. So um, this is uh, have this has a lot of settings I'm not going to, uh, to drill in. What I want to do is I want to show you some basic concepts here. Um, when it comes to the Configuration Explorer. And so what I want to do is just dive right in here. And now what now starts is the .NET usage part one. So what we want to do is we will create a simple key value by hand. You could do it, by the way, using uh, bicep. I will maybe showcase this later. Problem with bicep here is that this is missing some options. Um, so it's not complete in my opinion. So you either are stuck doing it by hand in the portal or maybe using the CLIs. I am not sure, but you know, just exploring with you guys. So let's add a key value. And the trick here is that you just take kind of the syntax that was already um, built into the app config system of .NET. So that means if you have values which are nested, you should separate those values with a colon. So let's say you want to, uh, you, you have something like your app is called app config sample. And now you will have some basic settings in it. Or let's say just um, the demo value one, whatever demo value. This is a demo value for your app config sample. Okay, nice. Let's give it the value of one and don't do anything else, just like this. So you have a key and you have a value. So remember this colon is just here to build a hierarchy of values. So this is app config sample. This is demo value specific for this application in my schema. This is just me applying a scheme, uh, schema. So now you have it here. I'm not talking about label and stuff like that. You see the last modification and you can use the three dots here to edit the value um, whenever you want. So now we have this value. Okay, nice. Let's go to our source code and let's create .NET new, what is it? Console and let's add the um, app config uh, demo. Okay. What is it? CD app config demo, uh, LSH, and let's open writer. I think it's a good idea to use writer here because it's a little bit faster than Visual Studio, but I'm not judging, okay? I'm just saying that writer works too. I maybe 
uh, for you who are interested, you you um, people following me know that I I'm usually a Visual Studio guy and I still love it. Um, don't get overexcited about me using Writer. So this is Writer with you know. Let's get rid of this. Let's zoom a little bit and now let's talk about what you need. So first of all, what you will need is in order to work with app configuration, as always, you need NuGet packages. So let us go to the NuGet packages here and I'm uh, doing this. And here is um, Azure app config, just do a full text search. And what you will need is the Microsoft extensions configuration, Azure app configuration NuGet package. Okay, let's add it to my um, NuGet packages. Nice, added it. And now let's uh, talk about how to build. So first of all, what you will need is a configuration builder. This is not, um, this is not from this package. This is the basic Microsoft extensions configuration, configuration builder. So what you do this time, instead of saying, well, you know what, I have app settings here locally on my machine, whatever. Now it's time to connect to um, your um, app configuration. So for doing this, this package brings in uh, this extension method builder dot, and then you have add Azure app configuration with uh, some options provided here, the usual pattern, I would say. Uh, what the, so. Okay, now we're good and we are adding, and we're basically saying, you know what configuration, you will come out of, um, uh, Azure app configuration and not out of files. Okay, nice. So what we need to do is we need to take the options and first of all, we need to connect to the Azure app configuration. So we could put here, where is it? Access keys. Um, so let's um, talk about access keys. You have read write access keys and read only access keys. Be aware that you should basically for reading out the configuration, you should use read only keys. So let me copy out this and I will delete this resource after the talk. So uh, I could I can show you the secrets here without any problems. This will be my connection string. So I could put it in here, but this way it makes my app configuration kind of senseless in terms of, you know, um, uh, security and whatever. So <laughs> what you should do is you should get this from the environment. So I have this here as an example. And let me just do a little bit of um, maybe of uh, refactoring. Uh, can please reshop? I know reshop is not helping me. So throw exception, I'm ignoring this. So what I do is I get this out of an environment uh, variable, which is currently not defined which is app config uh, underlying connection string. And then I'm using this connection string. So basically I'm depending on environment variables. So somebody has to set this environment variable. So let me see if I can add a launch setting. Um, and that's um, interesting, uh, new item. No, uh, can I, can I, can I not? Uh, I'm always searching this option. Uh, ah, here it is. Launch settings JSON. So I think this is the one I need. Um, yeah, don't ask again, add it. And here at this place, um, basically this was dumb. But anyway, I can add, how was it? Was it, I think this way, right? So I can add key value pairs. And now I could add, uh, where was it? Um, I could add this guy here and let me just just straight away unversioned yes and this is please can i uh i will do it with my git ignore let me do a git ignore here um at file dot git ignore and let me uh, just move out the launch settings JSON. So I hope this is working. Commit launch settings JSON. Okay, he's uh, not taking it. 
we will see it later. Let me just get this out of the way. So what we're going to do, let me put a breakpoint here and debug this. Let's see if this is working as expected. First iteration, step by step. So this is not working. So he's telling um, this is not defined. Is it correct? App config. Uh, so I am not sure. I added configuration and does it program environment variables? Yeah. Um, okay. What's happening uh, if I'm saying app config connection string? I'm not sure what's going to happen now. Uh, what? No. Remove this, remove this, remove this. Okay apply okay what's happening now i'm a little bit confused uh, with okay better now we have the connection string here cool and then we can execute the connect and then basically we are out okay nice let's assume took a little bit okay so the connect happened next step when you are connected now the app configuration is now connected to our azure app configuration let's assume that so <clears throat> what you can do now is you can you should be able to build your config use the builder and build whatever it is so now from this point on you should be able let us go back to the azure portal let's go to my config manager remember uh, that we have this value here let me paste this out uh, and now you should be able to console right line um, config and then as you know uh, or as usual just paste in the old value and this should um, write out whatever we have in the demo value and let's just for the sake of demo because it's so cool let's check the value and let's do hello world we change the value to hello world so we apply the change and now when I run my application, um, I would expect it to write out hello world on, to the console. So let's see. There it is. It writes out hello world and then it uh, exits. So basically this is working. Okay, hello world is done. Let's do a little bit more. So if you look at this, this is kind of strange because you know, when I have the next value for my application, and let's assume that I always follow this pattern. Everything which is for my sample application will have app demo sample, app config sample as a prefix and then colon. Okay, so in this case, it would make sense to just take out the application name and before I build everything, I do it this way. So I'm using, let me import, I'm going to the reflection as you can tell, if you see assembly, get entry assembly name, it's the uh, assembly which started the process, basically, get the name, which is not the name, but uh, you know, this is the assembly name object, which has a name property. So with our, all this Jumanji in place, it should just give us app config demo as the app name. Here you can see app config demo, this is exactly what I wanted him to do. So from now on, I could always use app config demo here uh, app name and it should work so this is my first um, improvement if you will so now I have uh, where is it is it working it should work app name why is app name not coming? Uh, what's going on? Um, let's see. Uh, I think app name demo value should work just like a, uh, like a charm. We see app config demo. I think app config demo is not what I used as the key. Yeah, I use sample, so I'm an idiot. Anyway, um, edit. I cannot remove it. Cool. So let's do app config demo this 
Let's remove this. It's also possible to remove it. Good to know. Let's create a new one, which is app config demo. So hello world again, just to see that it, and I'm explaining the label later. Okay, nice. And it should just immediately use this value. And here you go. Hello world again. It was just a typo. Nice. So there is, when you configure after the connect, <clears throat> there is a nice um, option to have a filtering on your application, which is the select option. And you have two options here to filter, the key filter and the label filter. Because I have not um, talked about uh, label filters, um, let me try out the key filter. And I'm, I'm, I'm honest, I don't know if this is what it's, supposed to be app name and then maybe this one i'm not sure just trying out on the key filter so with this in place it should be able to just go to the key directly let's see if this is working i'm not sure maybe we have to go to the documentation i am not positive no it's not working this way let me first of all try to take out this stuff. So maybe it's just the prefix. Let me see. No, it's not working. So let's go to the uh, select method here in the documentation. Here is the documentation. And then we have here some references. And let me go to the filter, type filter into filter. Uh, feature filter no this is the next one what this can do concepts configuration files event handling hmm where is the keys and filters so this is explaining the keys we know this labels we will talk about here it is query values key is this key is that label is not that interesting um, can we have a key filter please what is the IntelliSense saying? Key filter. The key filter to apply when querying Azure App Configuration for key values. And, hmm, more please. Um, the key filter. How is this working? Is it giving me, okay, label filter. Here it is. An answer can be added to the end to return all key who key begins with the key filter. Okay, nice. So this is what I thought it would be. So this is telling me this is the, the filter. Let me debug again. Maybe now it's working, just an asterisk. No, not at all. App name. Um, so where is my, was it this way? E.g. filters ABC returns all key values whose keys start with ABC. Mm -hmm. See, for all other cases, character backslash are reserved. Must be escaped. Okay. E.g. key filters. Okay, I see. If I want to, mm -hmm. built-in filter. Okay, but it's not working. Uh, the thing I wanted you to show is not working. So let me see. Uh, is this correct? App name star should totally be whatever it is. So let me just maybe I'm doing something wrong. Select key filter any. No, let me Google this. This is explorative. I didn't prepare this because I thought it will just work. Azure app configuration key filter. Yeah, go key filter class, Microsoft learn. So as usual, nothing helpful here. Syntax key filter, thank you. So what is he telling? Sabadino. Still I see works X expected with, uh -huh. what is the support syntax for filter? will get you all keys that start with my keys prefix. No. If you want a key with my keys prefix, you will have to escape the, oh, oh, star. Yeah, we, we saw this. 
Is that true? Thank you. Uh -huh. Key filter. This is not helpful, guys. As usual, I have to say. So let's see. Let's try out. What happens? So maybe app name and asterisk. Hmm. I know that the label footer is working, but because I didn't explain labels to you, you don't know what this means. So uh, let me just quick check if I am doing stupid stuff. So let's see if app name is app config demo and I have app config demo. What happens if I'm doing this like this? So if I have app config demo demo uh, no uh, what happens if I have app as my prefix? Is this working? Cannot. Makes no sense. No. Okay, uh, this is not working as expected. I have to somehow see what this is. App config demo. I don't get it. Okay, anyways, uh, let's stick first of all with my app name. And uh, we are pretty sad that this is not working. But anyways, I don't want to mess around too much. Let's test if this is working again. And it's working again. Okay. And let me see if I can clear this out maybe in another series. I don't know. But what's interesting is let's come to labels right now. So what about labels? Labels solve the problem of multiple stages. This is interesting. Let me show this in the portal. So if you have uh, here this um, app config demo value, it has no label. So what you can do is you can add a value to it and give it um, a name of or value of hello from dev and give it the development label. So this is kind of the default uh, thing to do stuff in .NET. So now I have, as you can see, I have the same config key, which is app config demo value without a label and with a label. And what I can do now is the following. I can go over and get my current environment from, let's do the default way, which would be something like this. Um, and, you know, by the way, I just learned that this is just for websites. I don't know. Uh, you should have a .NET environment or whatever in place. So let's assume we have .NET. But anyways, it's still not working. So what I will do is I will go to my configuration and I will go to my environment variables and I will tell him to put here a development. Can I? This is what ASP.NET projects are doing automatically with ASP.NET uh, underscore environment for you. I will do this here um, for my system. So here should be now the string environment. And now what we can do with this select thing, let's first of all try out what happens if we do nothing. So if we do nothing, we get hello world again without development. Okay. Let's now do this select option again. And this is what I told you what is working. So what you can uh, do, first of all, is there's this um, string, this default string, which is key filter um, dash uh, dot any, which is just telling him don't filter on the key. It's not working anyways. But anyway, uh, let's not talk about this fail. And what you can do now is to give him um, the filter for the label. So this is telling, I'm telling him that I'm only interesting in the label environment. So development in my case. So this should now link him to this other value, 
There's a second one where the label is development, actually. Okay, let's see if the message changes. And yes, now it's telling me hello from dev. So interestingly enough, I can do this in the configuration without bothering anywhere in my code. He's filtering for everything with the label development. So now, of course, an interesting part would be if what happens if we have, let's do another one, which is um, other sample app config demo dash other sample. So this is another value. Let's give him 12 for whatever reason and no label apply. So this is kind of the situation now is we have an app config.json which has two values and we have an app config.development.json which overrides the demo value but does not override the other sample value. So question is what happens to the other sample value? Do we get it or not? Because we limited it to the environment. Let's see what's happening. And as you can see, you don't get it, which is, and this is not the same, um, this is not the same behavior like you would expect it naturally when you come from .NET. So if you have no explicit environment set, but you have an environment filter, now you have no value. So I am not sure um, because this filter syntax here, where is this select, uh, this label filter um, is, there is a documentation for this. And I, I didn't check it out, um, to be honest, too deep. So this is something I am still investigated on and it will hit you with updates. So the label filter, I guess I can do some magic in order to tell him I want development and no environment, both of them. But this again would confuse him on the other side because I just want him to bring me all the stuff which is without development or the stuff which has development. So it's kind of hard to tell you from the current moment I, or situation, what I see is the desired way is to have all values duplicated for all uh, environments you have, which is not so nice, I would say, as it is in uh, .NET, which also brings you to the situation where you don't want to mess around with too many of those values, probably. So which brings us to this concept of, hey, can we put in more complex types into um, those values here so that we don't have to have a key value relation between every single setting we have. And yes, you can. So what you can do is imagine you have a class um, config model, whatever it is, and you have some properties, prop f uh, a string of foo and prop an int of bar. And let's say uh, string is, is, is required working, is a required one. This is a new keyword in um, C sharp 11, uh, which says, okay, the warning goes away. This is required. This model should fail to um, uh, work on runtime if it ever has an instance or which, which is tried to instantiate without foo. So it's not possible to have an instance, let's call it this way, of config model without defining foo. This is actually a constructor the, um, which needs this to be set. Anyways, um, let's put it away. And what you can do, like you do it uh, all the other time too, is, let me see, um, think config.bind. Um, this is totally possible. Uh, so config bind is something which is on the configuration. So we can do it because it's still the same uh, configuration system as it is always in .NET. So after we have it, we can tell him, you know what? There should be um, config bind once, uh, first of all, the object to bind to. This will be my 
model i don't have it currently and then you have this uh this key uh first okay let's do the key first which is something like what would it be something like uh, let's call it complex which is this is complex and then the model so var uh, config model is new config model and now it dies because I have required <laughs> I'm an idiot so required uh, let's make it nullable this is a clean way to do it yeah because the, you you probably saw it coming huh so now I'm binding uh, or I, at least I want to bind um, to a property called complex but with the key development and I want him to um, interpret this as a complex object. So let's go. Let's go over. Let's create a new one, which is um, app config demo complex. This is the name. Let's do JSON. Um, foo is, oh, JSON foo would be, I think, something like this. Uh, and I'm not sure. Foo is hello and a bar is 10. Let me double check, foo bar looks good, looks good. Label is development, content type is I think application JSON. This time, because I want to ensure that he understands that this is JSON, apply. And he stored it as this key with the wrong name, complay. <sighs> I sometimes, you know, you know what it is. Let me do it again. Delete. Punish myself. Okay, let's put it in and let's say app config demo complex. Thank you. Label is development. Content type is application JSON. Apply. Okay, nice. Let's try out what's going to happen uh, if we have after we bound let's have a look at the config model so there it is the config model is hello and 10 so this way we are not bound to put everything you know in single key values but we can put more complex stuff into objects and this way we can more organize our configuration. This is nice. So let me come to the last thing for today's uh, episode. In order to do this, I have um, to first of all deploy something else into my Azure. So let's go to my bicep again. So let me have a cup, a sip of coffee, not a whole cup. Mm. What I want to showcase now is how to store secure values, not as raw text in the app configuration, but in a key vault, which is a natural thing to do. So let's just add a key vault. I have prepared this a little bit so I, you don't have to watch me type this all the time. Now let's talk about this a little bit. Um, this is not working straight away, but okay. I'm deploying a key vault to Azure to the same resource group. I'm call, um, we'll call this uh, in my name schema in the same location. It is an A standard key vault and it will have a um, link to the tenant um, of the subscription it is deployed to. The access policies will be here right in a second. I'm saying RBAC, so role-based access controls authorization, please yes. Don't use uh, um, AKV, so Azure Key Vault authorization. It's, it's not a good style. Enable it for deployments and for template deployments, but not for disk encryption. So this is not available for disk encryption and bypass Azure services. Okay, so now what is policies? Uh, policies is a little trick I, wanna, I will show you. So in order to have policies in place, I will um, put in two parameters. Uh, at the top, let me talk about this. So this is an array of um, Azure AD object IDs uh, for all the security items which should be enabled reader access and all a uh, second array for all which should have creator access so basically full access and what I'm doing now is I'm 
using, let me show you first for the readers. So I'm building a variable, which is a loop. So it loops through all the reader IDs and generates for every reader ID, it generates an object, which has object ID property permissions, which is what, you know, Key Vault uh, down below expects. So the result of this operation, if there is any reader ID, I will have an array of JSON ob objects of this type. And the only variable will be the ID which was passed in. So the same is true for the creators. So now I'm doing the same stuff for the creators. So I'm iterating over the create IDs, generating objects, but now we have secret permission all. It's only secret, no certificates, whatever. If you don't know what I'm showing here, you probably don't know anything about Key Vault. And I don't have a talk about this in my channel, but you should check out Key Vault. It's one of, I would say, the building blocks of Azure, if you take it serious. And I will make um, a, uh, a cast about it. it just if, if this is something which interests you a lot, please leave a command and I will, you know, prioritize it a little bit to the top. But for the moment, the last step is that I take those creator policies and reader policies and I combine them to a single array. So this is basically what Union does here in this case. So now I have the policies, which is an array. And I can just say your access policies is for the key vault is what I give you. In. Nice. So problem now is that main bicep is yelling at me because it tells me, you know what, you are missing some required fields, which are the creator IDs and the reader IDs. Totally gotcha. So let me, I prepared this. Let me add two parameters here, which is for reader IDs, for create IDs. And I will pass those in by doing this one. So this way, I'm just saying the reader and create IDs are coming from the parameters JSON. And for the sake of not showing you too much, um, I will just add those values. Now, you know, I will add basically two values, creator IDs. I think vault creator IDs is what I need to call it. It will have, let me just show you the schema, a value of which is not a string, but an array which will contain uh, the, a string and for the readers, the same thing. So what is the string I put in here? You will go, usually <clears throat> you could go to the Azure AD, go into your, let's say security groups. So into your groups, because usually you don't want to give single users explicit exit, um, access to some roles here. You don't do this. What you do is usually you go to and have a security group of Azure AD and then all the users in the group, they inherit this right. Actually, I'm just showing this because this is something a lot of users are asking on Stack Overflow. Normally, um, what you should do, you should do cloud adoption um, and there's a framework for this. And this would say there's something above the subscription where your key vault lays in. And you should apply a role assignment to the element above your key vault and tell him, you know, in this subscription or in this so-called management group, I want a user or user group to have a certain access. And this way you don't have to mess around with accesses directly on resources. But Anyway, I just wanted to show you this. Now I will pause the video, put the stuff in. This will not be part of the GitHub. So just a second. <clears throat> so I did this and now um, that I have this in place, let's double check. I have now my main resource and I have additional key vault. And now let's just redeploy everything and just start with a what if. Um, yes, and if I can type. Let's put in my what if here, which is uh, saying you need fault read IDs, um, fault read IDs. I have to double check my, um, my file. Did it. And I, I hope my, yeah, it is running. 
I always have to check OBS. OBS is pretty bad in showing me. So let's do a what if deployment and see if this is now working. And hopefully it's not showing my parameter values. Mm, let's see. It should be, it should not take too long. Mm. And what I expect him to show me right now is that he will add a key vault. Yes, this is uh, what I expect him to do. So my tenant ID is okay. And he is going to add a key vault. That's nice. Uh, he's not showing the, okay, looks nice. Okay, let's do it without what if. And let's see what is going on. So let's go over here to my resource group. And I expect him to deploy another resource here for the key vault. And then you will see what I'm up to. Okay. And I will probably uh, continue with the, oh no. Uh, I will get, uh, what is going on? Bad request, invalid value for access policies object. Yeah, I know why this is, let me correct this, deploy it, and then I'm come, coming back when this is deployed. There it is, it is deployed. Um, now I have my read IDs here. Wonderful. Uh, so I have to uh, mask it with Photoshop, I guess. Okay, anyways. Uh, let's go over to uh, Azure and let's refresh. And this is the whole fight was about uh, to have a key vault, you know, laying um, at the app configuration. Nice. What we can do now in key vault is uh, if we have the correct rights, uh, we can go and have secrets and we can generate secret values. So let's just um, my secret, whatever it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. So this is my secret. And now I have a secret stored securely in Azure. So let's go over to app configuration. Why this is so important is we can go here and create a new key vault reference, which is now app config demo as a prefix, uh, secret, which is my value. The label will again be development. Remember, you cannot access it otherwise. So, and now he's giving you the opportunity to, to reference the value as you can do it in app configuration too with a little bit of nougat magic. And now you, he, you have access to the secrets by seeing the secret, you know that this app configuration has access to a key vault. This is because it's an Azure resource and you can access it just like that. Take the latest version and not a specific one. You could link it to a specific version, no problem. Now you have it, apply. And the cool news is it has now this little tiny key here uh, showing you this is a value coming from Key Vault. And what we could do now without, uh, or at least that's what the most people think, is now, you know what? I'm going here and going to my secret value, which is the key. And this fails. And we will see in a second why. <coughs> so this should give us an exception, I think. And there it is. The basic exception is that he tells me, hmm, I have a reference here. So what you need to understand is that the app configuration is giving you a reference uh, pointing to the key vault and saying, hey, if you want to have this value, you need to go to the key vault and get it from there. But this application currently is not configured to access the key vault. So how do we do it? Uh, luckily, the app configuration uh, configurer has everything in place, but we need a NuGet package, an additional one. So what you need here is the NuGet package is called the Microsoft or the Azure Identity NuGet package. Let me search for Azure Ident, there it is. So this is kind of the Swiss knife package every time you need to authenticate something in Azure. It's not only here, it's used in when you go to the Azure Graph or whatever. This is the new stuff every time, by the way, you see NuGet packages. 
and you want to deal with the Microsoft Graph and you see something which has not the blue A, don't touch it. It's probably outdated. Check it very, very carefully, check the notes, go to the package thing, just a side note. Uh, everything which goes to the Microsoft Graph or Resource Manager down below there and has a blue A, it is nice. Problem with that is, is it here? Okay, this is barely one zero. There are a lot of packages, at least there were lately a lot of packages having uh, this as the only option which is future safe, but there were pre-release packages. This was bad. Anyways, let's add Azure Identity as a second NuGet package. And with this in place, we can now add the, um, after the connect here, let me do a little bit of entering. So we connect to this and then we can use configure key vault. There it is. And there is this cool concept, I like it, which is uh, giving him the credential, but we don't pass in any credential here. Uh, we have this, uh, where is it? The default Azure credential. So this is kind, kind of neat. This is getting the credentials from the environment. So there are two possibilities to deal with this. Locally, he will probably use my credentials from my current session I'm in, whatever he takes as a session. So when I hit F5, I'm basically running .NET run. And this gives me the context of the thing I had in the console. And using this, he will access the keyboard. So a far better approach will be to put in some environment variables and they are defined. Uh, so if you go to Azure credential documentation, you will see that there is, I think a service principle key for your environment and a, a secret key for environment. And you need to define a service principle. This is not part of this. Um, again, if you need more information on this part, put it in the comments and I will make up a tutorial on this. A single one. This gives me a better idea what's important for you guys, what you understand, what you don't understand. But you, when you are already logged in, in some context on your machine, this should work without any effort. Let's see if this is working, if we can see our secret right now. <laughs> Come on. So there it is. So this other sample thing is not working because we don't have a label in place, but we got our secret value from the keyboard. What you also saw here is that the startup was a lot slower than before because you have to wire up all this keyboard um, connectivity and so on. Mm. Again, I did not investigate too much into this. I will come back with information if I found out how to make this more clever, more performant. But to be honest, uh, this is not a place where I would say uh, I would never use it because the most common place where I would use app configuration is in app services or function apps. Mm. And there you have different scenarios how you can protect your configuration from executed over and over again. So in app services, this is not happening because this builder is only running on startup, as you might know. And on function apps, you can do static variables, stuff like that to prevent it from running over and over again. But this is it. So um, this is the basic example. I will put all of this into, um, into my source code so you can uh, watch it and uh, repeat it. What's important, I didn't cover two things. First of all, and that would be a second part, uh, I'm already preparing, including hopefully some updates on the um, key filter and other stuff. Mm, what I will do is I will pu uh, show you next time how to auto refresh the configuration. So what happens if now in Azure, those values are changing how can you react to those changes? Because this is another thing this makes, um, uh, which makes app configuration pretty cool. So now you have this independent store of app configurations and you can change the behavior of your application without doing redeployments, without doing pull requests and deploying 
new stuff or even worse, messing around in the app configuration on the machine, which is not so cool. Uh, so this central store now gives you the opportunity that even people who don't know how to configure a .NET application, if they stick to the plan, if they stick to the plan, um, and they change the values here very carefully, you have a kind of central configuration management in the cloud independent from your software. So this but uh, requires that the app reloads the configuration on certain occasions. So, you know, if this would mean that you have to stop and start your application, this would be useless. I will show you refreshing the stuff next time. The second thing where my company is currently um, evaluating this is this feature management stuff. So this is something completely different. It's another area. It's feature toggles and a colleague of mine brought this to our attention. And as soon as we will have more hands-on experience with this, because we will try it out in our products, I will uh, make another part, maybe a third part. But next time it will be auto refresh and some updates on the filtering and stuff like that. So to sum up, um, I hope this was interesting for you guys. Um, as you've seen, I'm struggling with uh, some minor parts here too. Uh, I will go into more details next time. Enjoyed you, uh, this, this talk very much. I try to make more uh, of the talks, but currently time is, uh, you know, a, a rare thing. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.